Hi, I'm Beth from the West Dallas Public Library, and this is Let's Go on Vacation Book Club. Today, we're finishing our last day in the Grand Canyon. It's been beautiful. Next week, we'll go on a new trip, and I'll let you know where that is at the end of this episode. So today, in Where is the Grand Canyon? Chapter 7, A Trip to the Grand Canyon. Visiting the Grand Canyon is amazing and frustrating. It's amazing because there are so many sights and so many interesting things to do. If you've never ridden a mule, you can do that at the Grand Canyon. But it's frustrating to go there because the Grand Canyon is so huge that seeing only a little bit of it can take two or three days. People visit the Grand Canyon year after year after year and never see all of it. Most visitors, especially the first time, go to the South Rim. It is much easier to get to than the isolated North Rim. It also offers a greater choice of things to do and see. Inside the visitor center, there is information, an information desk staffed by park rangers who can answer questions about the park. The first thing, of course, is to stop and take a good long look. The Grand Canyon Visitor Center at the South Rim by Mather Point is a popular stopping point. The view from there encompasses almost a third of the Grand Canyon. Mather Point also overlooks one of the widest parts of the canyon. Remember, if you're visiting during the busy summer months, you may encounter big crowds all along the South Rim. There is plenty of parking away from the rim. There are free shuttle buses on the South Rim. The buses take four different routes. Using the shuttle buses, it is a good way to visit the most popular spots. It is especially helpful during the busy summer season when one of the roads is closed to regular traffic. Grand Canyon Village has hosted visitors for over 100 years. When the Santa Fe Railroad first reached the South Rim in 1901, people finally had an easy way to travel to the Grand Canyon. That's when tourism really began. At the top of the Bright Angel Trail, visitors cannot miss seeing a rambling frame house with a sign that says, Colt Studio. The Colt brothers, Ellsworth and Emery, also deserve some of the credit for turning the Grand Canyon into a popular vacation spot. In 1902, they started photographing tourists starting their mule trips into the canyon. Once each group left, one of the brothers, usually Emery, would take the exposed film and scramble nearly five miles down the Bright Angel Trail to where there was fresh water that they needed for processing film. After de developing and printing the pictures in a dark room they had built there, Emery would walk back up the very steep trail and sell the pictures to the returning tourists. The Kolbs also roamed throughout the canyon, photographing the natural wonders that most tourists could not get to. They sold those pictures in their studio. In the winter of 1911 to 1912, Ellsworth and Emery retraced John Wesley Powell's journey down the Colorado through the canyon. They made movies of their trip. In later years, they toured the United States showing the film and encouraging everyone to come and see the Grand Canyon. And many did. Today, the Kolb Studio is a gift shop, bookstore, and art gallery. In the 1920s and 30s, the architect, Mary Jane Coulter, designed six beautiful buildings for the park. Back then, it was unusual for a woman to be an architect. Mary Jane Coulter was a very talented one. She took great pains to design buildings that reflected the Native American history of the Southwest. In fact, she became an expert on Native American customs, art, and jewelry. Coulter designed Hermit's Rest, Desert View Watchtower, and the Lookout Studio to give visitors great places from which to view the Grand Canyon. Lookout Studio is in Grand Canyon Village. 
Her rest is seven miles west of the village. Both blend into the canyon landscape so perfectly that it is easy to miss them at first. The rocks in the stone walls are laid horizontally and echo the rim's rock layers. The Desert View Watchtower is nearly 25 miles east of the canyon. It looks like an authentic Native American structure, as does Hopi House, the gift shop designed by Coulter that is right in the village. Coulter designed two famous hotels at the Grand Canyon, Bright Angel Lodge and Phantom Ranch. Bright Angel Lodge is right in the village. However, Phantom Ranch is at the bottom of the canyon at the base of the Bright Angel Trail. While Phantom Ranch was being built, Coulter had to take a five and a half hour mule ride down to get to the construction site. All the materials for the ranch, except for the stones, had to be carried down by mules. Mule rides remain a popular way to see the Grand Canyon. Mules have carried supplies and people to the bottom of the canyon and back for over a century. Besides overnight trips to Phantom Ranch, there are shorter mule rides along the Rim Trail. Hiking and camping are both popular pastimes in the Grand Canyon. They offer a great way to take in the natural beauty of the area below the rim. The most popular hiking route is the Bright Angel Trail. It starts in Grand Canyon Village and twists and turns for 9.9 .9 miles until it reaches Bright Angel Creek and the Colorado River. The route is steep and the trail has no guardrails. Hikers must wear good shoes or boots and carry plenty of water because of the extremely high temperatures at the canyon floor. Even longtime hikers do not try to go down to the river and back in one day. It is also possible to take shorter hikes on the Bright Angel Trail with turnarounds at 1.5, 3, and 5 mile points. Other popular hiking routes are the South Kebab Trail, Hermit Trail, and Grandview Trail. The easiest trail is the Rim Trail. It goes from Grand Canyon Village to Hermit's Rest. It is flat and even paved in some places. Hikers can catch the shuttle bus back to the village if they get tired. There are two main campsites on the South Rim, one at Mather Point and the other at Desert View. These sites are operated by the National Park Service and fill up during the summer months. Spots at Mather Point can be reserved throughout through the National Park Service. Another popular camping site is Havasu Falls on the, on the Havasupai Indian Reservation. After hiking 10 miles down into the canyon, campers pitch their tents next to Havasu Creek. The North Rim of the Grand Canyon is much more isolated than the South Rim. It has only one hotel, Grand Canyon Lodge, and one campground. The North Rim is also at a higher altitude than the South Rim and gets much more rain and snow. The North Rim is only open from May 15th to October 15th. Every year, thousands of adventurous tourists take raft trips though, through part of or all of the Grand Canyon. The Colorado is a much tamer river now than when John Wesley Powell led his group through the canyon. That's because the Glen Canyon Dam regulates the amount of water in the river. Seeing the Grand Canyon from a raft is very different than seeing it from the north or south rims. The canyon walls really seem towering. They look much taller when you gaze up at them from the canyon bottom rather than looking down at them from the rim. And although there are many whitewater rapids along the route, experienced guides make rafting trips safe and fun. Chapter 8, The Hand of Man. It is easy to visit the Grand Canyon and think that, except for a few buildings here and there, humans have left it alone. But that is not true. The Colorado River has been tamed by dams built at each end of the Grand Canyon. Hoover Dam on the Arizona-Nevada border creates a gigantic reservoir called Lake Mead. Lake Mead has flooded the western end of the canyon. It is 112 miles long and over 500 feet deep. The fierce separation rapids 
that so frightened John Wesley Powell and his men were buried by Lake Mead. At the eastern end of the Grand Canyon is Glen Canyon Dam. It was completed in 1963 and has had a major impact on the canyon's ecology. Many of the canyon's natural sand beaches have disappeared. Spring flooding used to bring new sand down to the beaches. Now that, so now that sand is caught behind the dam. Water is released into the canyon every day. The amount varies depending on how much electricity is needed by the dam's customers. The water has an average temperature of 45 degrees winter and summer. That's cold. The humpback chub, a native fish, was able to survive the cold water in winter, but it needed warmer water in summer for spawning. The fish had to find smaller, warmer side streams to spawn. As a result, there are only a few thousand humpback chub a fish that has lived in the Grand Canyon for three to five million years. Now, the Park Service is taking steps to protect the humpback chub. It is moving some chub to other streams where fish will have a better chance at spawning. Three other species of fish native to the Grand Canyon were not so lucky. The Colorado pike minnow, round-tailed chub, and bony tail have disappeared from the area entirely. The Grand Canyon's popularity has also created problems. Over a million cars and buses bring tourists to the Grand Canyon each year. In the busy summer months, all those vehicles create traffic jams and pollute the air. There are many more people who would like to camp than there are campsites, and keeping the campsites clean and litter-free is not always easy. In recent years, the Park Service has created a master plan to manage all the visitors. People must park away from the canyon and take shuttle buses to the popular sites on the South Rim. Hikers are no longer able to buy water in disposable plastic bottles anywhere in the park. Camping permits must be obtained in advance, and there's a long waiting list for permits to take private trips down the Colorado. This is to make sure that there are never too many people in the canyon. President Theodore Roosevelt understood that it is a crime, he called it vandalism, to destroy or to permit the destruction of what is beautiful in nature, whether it be a cliff, a forest, or a species of mammal or bird. The rules set down by the Park Service will help keep the Grand Canyon beautiful for everyone now and in the future. The end. All right, thank you for taking a trip to the Grand Canyon with me. It was beautiful. Make sure to check the comments of this and previous videos for more for links to see more of the Grand Canyon. Now next week, we are taking a vacation to the Bermuda Triangle. Let's see, it looks a little rainy it should be nice. We'll see. Um, so next week, Monday at seven o'clock, tune in for the first episode of Where is the Bermuda Triangle? Otherwise, have a great weekend. Bye.